And so we're back. We're going to pick up where we left off in the last episode with the Rush A Show of Hands booklet. Well, this is where we left off. Turning the page. We're moving on to another interesting group shot there. <laughs> Definitely got the 80s look going on. Which, if I had to pick a decade, I'll take the 70s. I'm sure the 60s were interesting too in their own way. Definitely uh, the birth of a lot of my favorite music came out of the 60s. You all know I'm a huge Jimi Hendrix fan and he only made it to 1970s. So yeah, I definitely have an appreciation for a lot of the music of the 60s. I have some appreciation for this classic 50s rock and roll too. That's that's my wife's preference. She likes the 50s rock and the 60s bubble gum. I like the 70s rock and the 80s metal. Um, but we get along just fine. Nothing, uh, no conflicts in this household over music. Like I said, these are some really, really nice produced booklets. Rush was always a band that was known for giving you your money's worth, no doubt. Too bad we can't suggest you go see them today, but we can suggest you pick up these videos and relive the past. They were great, but they are done um, with the passing of Neil Peart. Uh, I think that uh, Rush was wise to go the Zeppelin route and not try to replace the drummer, but call it a day. And it's my understanding that that's just what they did. Um, I've heard that um, Alex Lyson's got a new project going on. I do have a solo album from him before Neil Peart's passing. I think they unofficially broke up for a little while after um, some of Neil Peart's personal issues and then uh, got back together again to uh, release the last album or two. But I'm glad we got what we got from Rush. And now we go to the next release here because um, those were... Replay actually came out after Chronicles, but the individual releases contained in Replay came out before. So, sorry about the glare there. Not much I can do unless I was to pull these DVD covers out and lay them flat, which then, you know, we got the folds and I've tried it. It doesn't really work the way you would hope. <laughs> so, just gonna kind of have to live with the glare. You can still see what I'm trying to show you and uh, no booklet here on this one which is a little surprising but since I did buy this copy used it's possible that I did not get the booklet that would have came with it but it has all the videos that they had put out for MTV and whoever else's usage and now yeah I started up the first episode of this rush DVD series with this shot here, the dragon, because I absolutely love it. <laughs> it's just, I don't know what it is about dragons, but I do like dragons, and pretty much any movie with dragons in it's going to get my interest. Uh, I even managed to uh, survive making it through the recent Dungeons and Dragons film, which I did not really enjoy too much and can't recommend, but it did have a dragon in there, somewhat. <laughs> And uh, so it was high on my got to see list. Definitely, definitely had to give it a chance, regardless of any views. I don't take a lot of stock in reviews unless I, you know, even if I respect the person that's giving me the review, I just don't put a whole lot of stock in reviews as far as it keeping me from watching something. If I have an interest in it, I'm going to watch it, even if the reviews are bad. And it just doesn't matter. Um, I want to see it and make my own judgments and I think that that's what everybody should do you know if you have an interest in something and you know take reviews as a grain of salt even even what I tell you you may not dis you may not agree with you might you might not 
Uh, that's what makes this world go round, is we are all different. We all have different opinions. And who wants to be a sheep, you know? Don't just go along with the, the crowd. Like what you like. That's the way things are supposed to be, you know? And I definitely like a lot of things that some of my friends don't. Um, I've got a lot of friends that scratch their heads about my appreciation for bands like the Carpenters and Simon and Garfunkel and when you look on the shelf and you see Metallica and Megadeth right next to well they're not right next to them but on the same shelf with the Beatles and, and you know I have a wide spectrum of likes and there's nothing wrong with that in my opinion in fact I, I should have a little bit wider <laughs> Especially when it comes to food. Oh man, when I pick an eater, I don't uh, care for a lot of foods. But that's getting way off topic there. Getting a little too personal, I guess, and we don't need to do that. So focus on what you're doing here, Will, which is showing some really cool artwork on a Rush DVD. Now some of these, I can't remember if it was this one, um, definitely uh, ACDC's River Platte DVD. Too much editing, uh, too fast to clips. I mean, two, three seconds on a shot and then cutting to another camera. I, I hardly get a chance to focus on what we're looking at. So I prefer stationary camera videos. And I don't want uh, to feel like I'm in a race car zipping by the concert stage trying to get a look. There's definitely some DVDs that, uh, concert DVDs that are overproduced, and there are definitely ones that have done, been done well. And um, I haven't watched this in years, so I can't remember if this was one of them that I didn't like or not. Uh, what also is annoying <laughs> uh, is when you get a concert video and somebody feels the need to start talking over it, like, uh, I want to watch the show, I want to hear the song, you know, you want to make a documentary, make a documentary, but, uh, and yes, I am referring to the Black Sabbath History DVDs there, it's like, or was it The Last Supper? Last Supper, yeah, that was the one, like, come on, interrupting the song in the middle of the song to talk about the band's history, not cool, uh, <laughs> I want to hear the song, I want to hear what we're, what they're playing, so, yeah, just a couple of little I don't want to say gripes, but observations about uh, music videos. It's definitely much more entertaining to me when you've got, uh, let's say, three or four cameras and they cut around from the different shots at a reasonable pace. Give you a view of the different members doing their thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Sorry about that, kind of got away from me, getting a little glare there, really glossy. I've uh, tried repositioning the lights to, to get the best lighting that I possibly can without glare, and there's just so much you can do with all these glossy pages. Plastic on the cases and finishes on the booklets, so they sometimes work against us. And there we've got the infamous washing machines that I was talking about in the last episode. <laughs> All right, now let's see how much of uh, R30 we can squeeze into this episode, because we're pushing a nine minute mark, so we're definitely not going to finish Rush Up in two episodes either, because I've got a few more here to show you. I even got one brand new one that I decided I'm going to break the seal on just for the channel, just for you. We're going to do my first, technically my first opening video with a Rush DVD. But that will be coming a little bit later, close to the end of the Rush DVDs. It's actually going to be a Blu-ray if we want to get technical. And I try really hard not to bump the, the rig and give you that jarring 
jiggle there, but. And here's another sticker. This was on the outside of the package, like I've previously said. I always try to save any stickers, anything that I can save. Uh, keep things as original as possible and keep as much as I can to remember. And yeah, this is an enormous booklet. So we're going to be getting interrupted in the middle of it too. To, uh, that's all right. The more to see, the better, right? That's my attitude anyways. Obviously, I don't think you ever have enough or have too much, or I wouldn't have such an excessive museum to share with you. <laughs> uh, where did I get the collecting bug and why? I don't know. I honestly can't say. But it's there. And I don't really have any regrets. Well, I regret some purchases when you buy something without having seen or heard it and it's a real dud. But that happens. That's part of it. That's the way things go. It's always going to be that way. Uh, I've wisely started taking to uh, using the public library for new DVD releases. Uh, saved me a lot of money because I've gotten a lot of films at the library that I watched. <laughs> that I decided not to add to the museum. Um, but if I get something from the library and I enjoy it, I definitely do go out and purchase it and add it to the museum. So I think we're going to leave it right here. And we will be back shortly with a part three, picking up where we're leaving off. So have a good one. See you soon.